Hi, my name's Dr. Catherine and this is my trusty sidekick Delilah. Say hello friend. Today we're going to be talking to you about parvovirus, also commonly known as parvo. This issue is particularly close to Delilah and my heart because when she was a little puppy we actually thought she had parvo. She was very sick and she had really bad diarrhea and we thought she wasn't going to make it for a while. We're going to be covering the symptoms of parvo. We're going to be covering treatment for parvo. We're also going to be covering a very important part and that is prevention. How to prevent the spread of parvovirus and also how to prevent your dog from getting it in the first place. So let's get started. You're probably watching this video either because your pup has parvovirus or you're worried they might have parvovirus or because you're really concerned about your pup contracting it and you want to do everything that you can to prevent that from happening. So let's chat first about symptoms. There are actually two different ways that the parvovirus can manifest disease in puppies. There's the intestinal form and the cardiac or the heart form. The heart form normally occurs in really young puppies and is very commonly fatal. Thankfully it's not as common so we're just going to chat today about the intestinal form, the much more common form. The intestinal form of of parvovirus normally presents itself in puppies between the ages of six weeks to six months. Symptoms include really bad bloody diarrhea. The diarrhea often starts off as a little bit thicker and then as the disease progresses it gets more and more watery and you'll notice a lot of bright red blood in it. Accompanying the diarrhea is often vomiting and puppies will become incredibly weak both because of the dehydration and they also become weak because they can no longer absorb nutrients and they become really really anemic or they've lost a lot of blood from that bloody diarrhea. It also is incredibly painful and because they're in so much pain they're feeling like crap they don't want to eat so with little puppies they're not eating they're vomiting they're they're having a lot of bloody watery diarrhea, they're losing a lot of weight because of it and they're also becoming more and more weak. With all of these symptoms unfortunately they cannot be managed at home. Their puppies will become really really sick unless you take them to the veterinarian. So if your dog is presenting any of these symptoms, especially that diarrhea that has blood in it in a puppy that's between six weeks and six months of age regardless of how many vaccines they've had please go to a vet this again this is a disease that is incredibly fatal if not treated properly and that treatment can only pre be performed properly by a veterinarian because it's really painful those puppies need to be given really strong pain relief that only vets can do and they also need to be provided with a lot of supportive treatment speaking of which let's chat a little bit about treatment for parvovirus Parvovirus. And I'll start by saying that parvovirus is not something that can be cured. So it's a virus that we don't actually have any drugs for to kill the virus. The best we can do, all we can do is help support the body as it fights the infection, prevent any secondary bacterial infections and that's often what will, call, uh, what will kill the puppy and also to provide that pain relief that I mentioned. Again, I'm going to reiterate, please go and see a veterinarian. Your puppy is very, very unlikely to survive at home and they're also going to be suffering in incredible pain. So please go see your vet for treatment. And treatment's going to include supportive treatment, so giving them intravenous fluids, so a lot of fluid therapy. Again, they're not able to absorb any nutrients. They're not going to be keeping any water down, so we need to be giving them fluids through their veins to make sure that the body stays adequately hydrated. Other elements of supportive treatment are agents that help protect the gut. Antibiotics can be an important part of treatment for some puppies because they're at risk of secondary bacterial infections that can lead to sepsis and make them even sicker. And then lastly, pain relief, a very important one. And unfortunately, even with the very best care at a veterinary hospital, not all puppies survive. And in fact, the younger the puppy is when they contract parvovirus, the less likely they are to make it. Similarly, the longer you let the symptoms run out before seeking treatment, the less likely they are to make it. So again, anytime you're seeing symptoms of vomiting, bloody diarrhea, a puppy that's looking really flat and lethargic, not wanting to eat anywhere up to six months of age, please go and um, get them seen by a veterinarian. And all of this brings us to our last point and that is prevention. Prevention is always better than cure for 
any disease that dogs can get, but especially for parvovirus because it is such a terrible disease. We want to do everything we can to prevent it from happening in the first place. Parvovirus is really, really contagious, meaning that it's really easy for dogs to pick it up either from other dogs or from their environment. The way it's transmitted is what we call the fecal oral route, which doesn't sound that nice and it isn't. It's essentially dogs ingesting the virus in some form. So the virus is first shed by another dog, by another puppy that's infected with it. And your dog might either pick up that virus from ingesting the feces itself, not a very pleasant idea, or, and this happens more likely, the little bits of virus particles spread throughout the environment and your puppy ingests it indirectly, either from your shoe or from the floor somewhere and the dog picks up that little virus particle. So that's another thing to keep in the back of our mind as we're thinking about prevention. It's a highly, highly contagious disease. And unfortunately, another thing working against us is that it is also really resistant to most cleaning products. So if it's a really contagious disease and really hard to kill, how do we actually go about cleaning it? Well, there are two steps. One is removing all of the organic matter. So removing any of the diarrhea, any feces that have, has been coming out of a dog that's had parvovirus and removing any vomit. And number two is cleaning with bleach. So with that bleach solution, you want to be cleaning anything that that contaminated dog has come into contact with. So that might be the floors, it might be furniture, it might be the bottom of your shoes. Dogs that have had parvovirus are going to be contagious for at least two months. That's a really long time, at least two months after they've finished showing any clinical signs. Meaning that if you have other dogs or if your dog that has had parvovirus has come into contact with say the neighbor's dogs or friend's dogs, you want to make sure that those friends and neighbors and family are getting their dogs tested for parvovirus as well. And you want to prevent other dogs from coming into contact with your dog and also your house um, for a good two months after they've shown those clinical signs and this might sound a little bit crazy but it's actually really good advice and if your dog at your house has had parvovirus recommendation is actually to avoid bringing any puppies into that home for several years after they've had parvovirus just because it is such a contagious disease and so hard to get rid of from the environment so despite your best cleaning efforts we can never be guaranteed and it's such a nasty disease we just want to do everything we can to prevent other puppies from getting it. Another important component of prevention is vaccination and if you want more information about dog vaccines please check out my video all about dog vaccine and they also shouldn't be let to explore the great outdoors until they've finished that puppy vaccine series. So you want to wait at least two weeks after they've received that third dose of the parvovirus before introducing them to the environment. Puppies can still socialize with other dogs and that is if they're going to puppy preschool where you know all of the other puppies there have been um, undertaking their vaccine course. They can also socialize with other adult dogs that are brought into your home or if you take them to your friend's house, provided you know that that dog that they're socializing with isn't showing any clinical signs, they're not sick themselves, and also that that house hasn't had any dogs with parvovirus in it for a good few years. So that wraps up our video all about parvovirus. We've covered symptoms, treatment, and also a really important one, how to prevent your dog from getting parvovirus in the first place. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to our channel because this sleepy dog and I upload new videos every week or at least one of us here does the hard work the other one just lies back and relaxes but thank you so much for watching and we look forward to joining you next time